Hello, 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 and welcome to Mathematically Yu-Gi-Oh! A series where we try to mathematically pinpoint the correct ratios, whether or not certain cards are worth it mathematically, or just discuss some numbers. I'm starting this series because I heard that there was a crying demand for more in-depth Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Being an honor statistics tutor in college, a law school graduate, and a Masters 1 player in Master Duel, I felt as I could use Yu-Gi-Oh! and numbers in a way that I haven't really seen them presented before. Today, and to start off the series, I wanted to answer a basic question that I find many players actually getting confused and wrong. And that question is, how many starter cards should you have in your deck? That may answer may actually surprise you. So, for the first question, I want to discuss what actually is a starter card, or a card that can manipulate your ratio, and sometimes can even be considered a starter depending on your definition of it. Well, you have your draw cards like Upstart Goblin, Chicken Game, Floor of Darkness, your Pot of Whatevers. They're technically lowering your deck size. In Upstart Goblin, you draw one and you basically, it pays for itself. Now you have a 39 card deck. So it's manipulating your deck ratio, which is pretty good. You have your searchers like your reinforcement of the armies, your bonfires, preparation from rights, most modern field spells. Those are going to get you your starters, like uh, the starter cards that's really going to get your combo going. So essentially, those cards can be considered starters because they get you your starters. Also, there's the cards that special summon your starters from the deck. Sinful Spoils, e Telly, One for One, Branded Opening, Sprite Starter. These are also pseudo starters because they just special summon your starter from deck. And finally, I just want to talk about Small World. Uh, that can also get you your starter. It's in a class all of itself. You do need to go minus one for it, but I did think it was worth the mention. So although these cards right here aren't the actual starters themselves, these cards are manipulating your ratios or essentially pseudo starters because they're getting your starters. With that said, let's jump into the data. So, uh... The question we're asking, how many starters should you run in your deck? Well, this data right here, and I'm going to explain it because it's a lot of numbers. Some of you might have even seen this before. This is, if you have, right here is the card number right here. So for an example, I'm just going to use Runics. The amount of Runic cards you have in your deck, right? If you have, let's say, nine Runic cards the chance, the percentage of you drawing one runic card is 74.18. Similarly, uh, if we're using prank kids, for example, every prank kid is considered to be another prank kid, right? Because you normal summon your prank kid and you turn that into the link one, Meow Moo, and that can get you any prank kids. So essentially, uh, the fire prank kid is, is worth just as much as the water prank kid. So the same thing, how many prank kids are you putting in? Let's say you put in all of the prank kids, there's four different kinds. So that there's 12 different prank kids you put in. What are the odds you're starting off with a prank kid? 85.06%. Oh, let's say you put in the three field spells. Those field spells get you a prank kid. Let's consider the same thing. Now you're starting with 15 of them. 91.93% chance to start with a prank kid in your hand. Or same thing, if you're starting with 15 different runic cards, you have a 15% chance. And generally, the agreed upon philosophy is you should have between 11 to 15 starters. So you can have between an 81 to 91% chance of drawing your starter. But here is the misleading thing. That number, while true for something good like runics where you can pitch your extra cards, will not hold weight for something like Prank Kids. And this is because Prank Kids, you can only normal summon once. And these percentages right here are the odds of just drawing one Prank Kid. What are the scenarios that you're drawing multiple? You don't want that. Well, something like Runic Tip, it's great because you could just pitch the additional Runics. Every additional parent kid that you draw is now a brick in your deck. And, or I'm sorry, a brick in your hand. And that's actually not good. So while these numbers are correct for something like Runix or something that doesn't have a hard once per turn, we're going to look at later a more true ratio, I feel, for certain things, for certain decks that have hard once per turns, but only some of them once. 
And this isn't just uh, general frankness. Think of something like Marincess for your normal something, or your normal summon matters. There are many decks where your normal summon matters, and only normal summon once. I'm going to show you the true numbers that. Let's look at the runic numbers. Uh, for decks that can special summon easily, uh, and, and decks that have like starters that can just grab uh, and, and aren't really limited to hard ones per turns, you will see that um, you know the deck falls off. And again, uh, between I would say the 11 and 15 mark is where uh, is the amount of optimal starters before you start getting really redundant and see multiple copies. Uh, so I would just, if you are running a uh, deck like Runic, yeah, 12, 13, 14, and that's your optimal ratio. And then you can people look at it like, how many hand traps do you want to see? Oh, I have 20 hand traps. It works the same way. You put 12 to 15 hand traps, you're probably going to see a good chance at least seeing one hand trap in your deck. So it's not, this, this, this chart isn't just limited to starter cards on your uh, hand, uh starter cards you can also use this for hand traps or even board breakers how many board breakers do you want but let's move on to where i was talking about the prank kids example here and this second set of data this is the data for if you have this many cards and only seeing exactly one of them so if i put in example nine prank kids i have only a 43% chance of just seeing one of the prank kids and that's the data that we need to look at because that data means eight is the perfect number of starters to see and don't worry about like runics and stuff because remember they're not bound by like just one or something eight is the best number to see minimum one of those cards because we need every single one of our cards to count modern Yu-Gi-Oh! And this set of this data set of numbers is something I don't see professionals talk about at all. I've seen those like the 11 to 15 number come up before, but I've never seen us talk about this new set of numbers. So let's just take a look and see what this graph looks like. I call this the optimal hard once per turn starter card ch uh, ratio because again, we're limited in uh, making sure all five of our cards count. So to make them count, you'll see that it peaks at about, you know, seven, eight, nine, right? If I could just go back real quick, seven, eight, nine, we're all in the 43 percentage. And then after that, when you start putting in more cards, the more cards you get, the more of the chance that you're going to see duplicates. And again, it don't really matter like the engine or something or the duplicates you can pitch them or do something with them but where the duplicates now become a brick you want to actually run less and that's why uh a lot of people are playing like uh who's playing like these 15 card prank kids ratios and they're like man prank kids fall off they're they're, they're a rope deck now well that's because you're still running these uh these new modern decks are running these ratios where they only need to run about eight starters think of like the cash tier engine uh the snake eyes engine whose multiple things the dia bell star gets it going all of them the um super heavy samurai they don't need uh they they need they get to run less and get the more advantage out of it so how do we turn decks like our prank kids and marincesses into better ratio master one decks or de decks that rely on the normal summon well here's an example of a person that i found on masterduelmeta.com that got to master one and in my opinion is running the incorrect ratios they're running three 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 and three so they're running 15 starter cards for prank kids meaning that they have over a 90 percent chance to get a starter but remember they're gonna run multiple they're going to see multiple copies if they're running 15 starter cards they only have a 28 percent chance of just having only one of those starter cards so while they do have a really high percent chance of finding a prank kids mathematically in more than 60 percent of this person's games he's going to have two plus prank kids in their hand and 
essentially a brick. Now, to bail him out of that brick, he is running three of the fusion spell. But again, if we I have to go way back, uh, how often is he going to see that fusion spell? I have to go to the first chart here. 33% chance he's going to see that fusion spell. So he still only saved 33% of the time. Not that great. And that just bails him out. He's still going to be breaking. So I, I kind of figured out how I would remake this deck in a more modern setting. Granted, he did get to master one in this modern setting without denying his skill. But I think mathematically, he can have a way better deck with ratios and build different. Here's how I would have built it. You can see here that I, uh, I'm only going to be running two of the prank kit cards. Two, four, six, eight prank kits, plus only one field spell for a total of nine. I'm going to be breaking less to see them, but it's still going back to that first chart where now I'm only running nine. I'm only going to see my prank kit starter a very low amount of time. But I'm trying to cut bricks, so I have to put an additional starter somewhere else. So I'm also going to combine it with the cash tira engine and i think this is where the people that combined engines usually have an advantage because now you're running two different engines you get more toolboxy and you're you'll notice here i'm getting more starters because i can run these together and they don't conflict because let's say i draw a prank kit and a cash tira i just throw out a cash tira first and then do my prank kit combo after stop before i use the special summon here so i don't get locked the xz's only but um yeah i'm get to run additional engines also because i got to cut more cards i get to include way more hand traps going back to his deck he only got to run uh five eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen hand traps while here i'm running three six 9, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 hand traps plus a talent. There's a lot more stuff in this deck. Also, what I'm also considering to be prank kids, I cut some of them out and I replaced them with upstart goblins. Reducing, remember going back to the beginning, I am essentially made my card, my deck, a 38 card deck. Which means now if I see a prank kid, and I see an upstart goblin, I know that, hey, that could have been an, a prank kid. I get to do my combo as normal, and at the end of my turn, do the upstart, hopefully draw into a hand trap. Or, if I don't draw any prank kids or no cash tira, I know that the upstart was a prank kid. I get the upstart, and the odds that I draw a prank kid or my cash tira starters are pretty high. That's how I would remake his deck. To be more modern and to fit to make every card count but is my deck really better well i think it is i'm gonna have less useless cards in hand i have more hand traps uh i have the cash tira engine and uh more toolboxy in nature i'm not as dependent on that normal summon prank kit as he was and ma remember mathematically i have a better chance of a better starting hand which means less bricks the con was Prank kids are a very good grindy uh, style, and I'll have less of a grind game. I'm going more of an all-in type. Uh, and I'm not playing pure prank kids anymore. In fact, for some reason, he lose the heart of the deck. I curse him. So, mathematically, I think when we think about making decks like that and choices, that's how I would make my deck. And, again, that guy is a master one player. So, there is merit to his deck. It is a great deck. I'm not trying to knock his deck but i always want to think instead of just going you know three 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 copies of this three copies of this three copies of this how can we make our decks better mathematically to fit the mold so we're making every single card count and well that was my example of how we do it i hope that really helped so future content if you like this kind of video uh Please uh, give me a like and subscribe. I'm fairly new to this scene, so uh, that would really help me out. Um, I'm thinking of maybe doing future mathematically Yu-Gi-Oh videos like, is Cyframe Gamma mathematically worth it? 
maybe I'll do proper ratios for certain engines. Is X card worth it in certain deck types, right? Is Jet Synchron worth it in the Snake Eyes? Board Breakers versus Hand Traps? Uh, just let me know in the comments. I'm very good with numbers. I love to break things down. And uh, I'm, I had a lot of fun with this, so I hopefully you did too. Maybe I opened your eyes to anything. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.